welcome to Morning Coffee with Jesus. I'm Rebecca, and I have my husband Jason with me again. Good morning. We're going to be talking about being rooted and grounded in love, so stick around for today's message. We're so glad that you are joining us. We are going to be talking about being rooted in the word so you are not going to want to miss this if you haven't already go ahead and click that like and share button so other people can hop on and get into the word with us yeah awesome so glad to be here thanks again for joining us um again we're just going to be talking about being rooted and grounded in love today you know there's just um so many just different things that attack us and you you want to know like how can we stay in this how can we um, keep faith. How can we overcome fear, right? And so we're going to read a little bit in Ephesians this um, this morning in, in uh, chapter three. We'll start in verse fourteen. And this is Paul talking here. So in Ephesians three, we'll start in fourteen. It says, "For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that He would grant you." according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. I want to read a few more verses because I want to read on down um, through the rest of this chapter. Verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Verse 20, now to him, this is what our doctrine declaration is based upon. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Another translation says his power that works in us. Mm -hmm. And then verse 21, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now we've kind of read through a lot there. So let's kind of like back up. We'll start in verse 14. We'll break it down. We'll read a couple verses and maybe we'll talk about it a little bit. Okay. So we'll start back in 14. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So what he's saying is what? I'm not just, you know, in this. I'm not just wishing. I'm not just hoping for the best. What is he's taking the time. He's stopping and saying, I'm bowing my knees, right? Which means to me that he's in prayer, mm-hmm. right? <clears throat> Paul's saying we got to be in prayer. We got to have constant relation with him. We got to talk to him. We have to honor and reverence him. Yeah. So he's saying, I'm bowing my knees, right? That's kind of the ultimate, like, honor. You know, when, when you go in front of a, yeah, like a royalty or something, right? It's like a surrender, right? It's like I'm just, I'm getting on my knees and I'm bowing my knees to you, right? <clears throat> then it even says, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So it's like, I'm not just bowing my knees to anyone. Mm-hmm. I'm not just surrendering to anyone. I'm surrendering to the one whom all in heaven yeah. and earth is named, right? The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And so, again, right, it starts in relation. It starts in worship and honor and reverence. Mm-hmm. Good? Yeah. I can see <laughs> I can see it. <clears throat> Verse 16, it says, but see, and here's another thing, too. I really like this because this is where it changes. Because <clears throat> when you first read those two verses, right, you're thinking, this is Paul, and this is what he's doing for him. But the reality is, is what he's saying is, is I'm on my knees and I'm praying mm-hmm. for you, mm-hmm. right? I'm on my knees. I'm bowing to him, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, whom all of heaven and all of earth is named. Like yeah. it even says the family, right? Which means all of us. Then he says that he, right? Not Paul, not your job, not your bank account, yeah. not your resource, not your income on this earth, that he who's the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, would grant to you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might 
through his spirit in the inner man. Mm -hmm. And so what is he saying is, is he's saying, I am here and I'm bowing and I'm praying for God for you. Yeah. Right. When we see somebody going through something, right. The Bible tells us that anything that we're going through, it's not uncommon to man, which means what people are dealing with the same things that we are. Yeah. People are looking for something. People need something. And being rooted and grounded in love, which is what we're going to read here in a second, is, is to me, what I'm saying here, reading from Paul is, is he's saying, I'm on my knees. I'm bound before him. And I'm praying that he would grant to you yeah. to be strengthened, What not only like in physical, not only in the situation, but it says in the spirit, in your inner man. Yeah. So being rooted and grounded in love to me is, is you've got to build this relationship. We know that the Holy Spirit lives in us, mm -hmm. right? We confess with our mouth, we believe in our heart. Yeah. That Jesus died for us and we ask him to come inside of us. Mm -hmm. And so Paul's saying that he's, this is what Paul's doing. He's like, I'm praying that he could strengthen you in your inner man. Mm -hmm. This is not a benefit, right? Paul's not doing this for his own benefit just so that he can get something. He's talking about this. We're not trying to get something from you. We're trying to get something to you. And that's the basis of this. This is how you are rooted and grounded in love. It's not just about me personally being rooted and grounded in love for me. Yeah. It's about me being rooted and grounded in love and believing God for somebody else's strength, for somebody else's success in their inner man, in their spirit. Yeah. Well, the Bible tells us too, you know, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Mm -hmm. And our flesh will argue that because it's like, oh no, I like to receive things, right? Yeah. But when you look at it from um, an emotional standpoint or even a scientific standpoint, they have even proven that the way that our body works when we give to others, it benefits our physical body yeah. to where it can produce healing and all these different things going off in your body. Um, and it actually helps you, even though that wasn't your reason for giving, right? Because yeah. a lot of us had no idea that it was a benefit to us. But like you're saying here, when he's praying for others, he will benefit in the end as well. Because when we take ourselves and our problems out of the equation and we start focusing on how can I help this person? How can mm -hmm. I help that person? Now we are shifting things in our own life and we're doing things differently. And now we're not so focused on the problems that were going on in yeah. our life. Yeah. So right there, we're already setting aside ourselves from the problem. And so we're able to move closer to what God is teaching us in his word about thinking of others, about giving yeah. and things like that. And so we're already applying Bible principles in our life. And so you're going to start seeing a shift. You're going to start seeing better results in your own life by doing something that seems so simple. Yeah. Yeah. And I really like this too, right? Is this, he says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, yeah. right? So it's not, it's, it's saying this is where this comes from, right? Mm -hmm. This is, he's going to grant you according to his riches, yeah, right? According to the riches of his glory, mm -hmm. right? It's not, it, it's, it's basically saying this is where you're going to get, this is your source. This is where it's going to come from. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then it says uh, in verse 17 that christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love verse 18 may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height and so what is he saying is, is he wants you to know everything mm -hmm. he wants your inner man your spirit man to be so strong right? To be so rooted and grounded in love, being rooted and grounded in love. We know what love is. God is love. Yeah. So what is it saying is being rooted and grounded in him, yeah. in his word. This is where your strength is going to come from, right? This is where your source is. And the source of this is his riches, his glory. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. 
Well, to think of a, as like a plant, right? Um, you can put a plant in all different kinds of environments, mm -hmm. right? They may sprout up, they may grow, but some of them are going to last longer than others because of the ground that they were planted in. Well, it's the same thing in our life to where we can plant ourselves in, not the word, we can plant ourselves yeah. in other things and get involved in. There's nothing wrong with having hobbies or a career, sure. right? Nothing wrong with that. But when that takes priority over God, then we are planting ourselves in the wrong ground. Yeah. And that's kind of what we're talking about here is planting or being grounded in love. Mm -hmm. So yes, you can grow, you can be successful in different areas, but it's not going to be permanent. It's always gonna be temporary mm -hmm. because it's not gonna be able to sustain you for long periods of time. Yeah, yeah, and I like that it's being rooted and being grounded in something is being dependent on that. Just like you said, right? It's not It's not about our, our job or where we work or something. So many times we can get very, very comfortable with, hey, the paycheck comes in every Friday or every two weeks or however you get paid, yeah. right? And it's got that person, that CEO or whoever that company name is on there, right? And you just think, oh, well, God's going to reward me, right? Because I'm faithful, right? What does this say? Being rooted and grounded in love. But it's saying that, hey, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, yeah, right? And so, so many times... Uh, even I have found myself in this thinking, well, God put me in this place, mm -hmm. right? He has rewarded me this. He has blessed me tremendously, and he truly has. But what I got, what I had to, to come to the realization of is, is that's not the source. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? God is still the source, and I need to be rooted and grounded in the source. Yeah, I love that you said that because I was listening to a message by Keith Moore, and he was talking about how, God is our supply, right? We know this in Philippians where he tells us that, you know, he will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Um, so he said, no, God is the supply. He will use different channels Correct. to get things to you. <coughs> so, you know, if you're working at a job, that could be a channel that he's using to supply things to you. Mm -hmm. But God is the one who is instructing those to supply to you, right? right. He's the one that gives us the seed. He's yeah. the one that gives us everything we need. And so God is always talking to each one of us. People who think God's never talked to him before, he has, and he does. It's a matter of are we tuned in and listening to him. But I loved that he used that example of, you know, God is always our supply. There's many different channels that things can come in that God will um, be able to uh, work with to allow things to get to you, but knowing God is the one who's supplying it. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And just like you said, right, as he's using those channels, you you become an expert. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You Like if you're really good at your job at what you do, yeah. you're, you're going to be compensated <coughs> well for it, right? Right. But that's kind of what he's talking about here is just Paul saying, I want you to be so rooted and grounded in God. Mm -hmm. I want your inner man, your spirit and your inner man to be so strengthened by his riches and glory that you know everything about it. Yeah. You know the length and the depth, right? And the width and the height. If you think about an object, right? Mm -hmm. To know the width, the length, the depth and the height. There's nothing else to know about it, right? At that point, you understand everything about it. You are an expert, right, mm -hmm. in that. And Paul's saying, I want you to be an expert in being rooted and grounded in love. Yeah. Right? Being rooted and grounded in him. And you know, everything, that, just like you said in Philippians, right, where he will supply all our needs according to what? His riches in glory. His riches. Mm -hmm. Here, Paul's even talked about, I want you to be strengthened in your inner man according to what? His riches. I don't know about you, but riches is always a good thing, right? Think about yeah. rich chocolate, right? Rich, mm, you know, yeah, come on. <laughs> cake, or right? Or something, you know, rich. Something that is just, it's it stands out, mm -hmm. right? And knowing his love, knowing every facet of being rooted and grounded in him, in his love, then you, you you know everything about it. Yeah. What happens is is it stands out. Right. 
right? And so when you are an expert in something, people want to talk to you. Mm, they do. People want to know, how did you get here? What do you think about yeah, this? How can I do that? <laughs> yep. How do you respond to this? How do you mm. handle this? Amen? Yeah. Why? Because that, they want to be able to do the same. Right. I mean, you, you think about it in, in just in the things that I'm interested in, right, in, in barbecue and brisket or, you know, anything Texas style barbecue. Right? I'm constantly looking up the kings in the Texas style barbecue, you know, realm. Right. I'm looking at the top people. And what am I doing? I'm not trying to emulate them, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to learn from them. Yeah. Well, why would they do that? Well, why would they think this? Why would they think that? Yeah, why does that work? How come, yeah, how does this work? How would that make mine better? <laughs> how is it different from what I do, right? And, of course, like, I, you, you've given me this journal, right, where I need to write down. And, and what am I doing is just, I'm becoming an expert mm -hmm. by writing down what size this, you know, brisket is, by writing down the temperature, by writing down how long, by writing down what I did in between. And then writing down the results. Mm -hmm. Was it tender, right? Was it juicy? Was it dried out? Right? Did it, was it too peppery? Did it have too much salt on it? What am I doing? I am becoming rooted, right, in understanding that. Yeah. And this is what Paul's saying. He's like, I want you to be like that, but with God. Mm -hmm. I want you to be like that in love. Yeah. And, and when, when you're there, right, this is where the, the <clears throat> faith over fear thing comes into play. Because when an attack comes, right, when fear comes on you, well, I'm rooted and grounded. I know the width, I know the length, I know the depth, I know the height, I know everything about this, yeah. right? And I know how to defend against this. But the key words in here is, is that he dwells, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Yeah, and two, I was um, kind of heard that people were like, well, I don't know everything. I don't know the length, I don't know. And no matter how long you live here on this life, you are still going to be learning and growing. I mean, even when we're talking about brisket, there's always room for improvement. There's sure. always room to grow and expand. Mm -hmm. Same thing in your finances, same thing in your marriage. There's always room to where you can learn more and grow more. So we're not saying that you're going to read the Bible and you're going to have everything. You're going to know everything sure. about God. You're going to continue to learn. Even when we get to heaven, we're going to continue to learn more. I mean, even the angels who go around the throne, every time they go around, they see a new glimpse of glory. his goodness and yeah. who he is. And so if they can do that over and over again and mm -hmm. they're still seeing something new, yeah. then, man, we haven't even scratched the surface yet. So don't get discouraged if you're like, I, man, I'm not even close to learning no the length or the height or any of it. Yeah. He's saying every day you are having that fellowship. You are moving closer in your relationship with him. And you know, I also heard too, reading that verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. You know, you don't have to get your heart cleaned up before Christ will come and live in you. That's right. Right. He wants to come in and he wants to clean it up. Mm -hmm. right? He's like, hey, just come to me. We'll, we'll, we'll perfect this. Yep. Right? You come to me. You let, let me come and live inside your heart. And then we'll together yeah. strengthen your inner man. We'll strengthen your spirit to where you learn the width, the mm -hmm. length, and the depth, and the height. Because you're learning it through experience. Yeah. There's just so many things you, know, you even talked about. You know, just the, the different things that you work on, like even in finance, in your own finances, whatever it is. There's so many examples out there. I mean, you, I like sports, right? There, when I first started watching sports, yeah, I didn't know all the rules, right? Right. I, I didn't know them all. Yeah. Once I learned all the rules and I kind of understood, well, then I started looking at other teams. Mm hmm Right? And then I'm seeing how this works. And I'm like, okay, well, this team's doing this and that team's not doing that. And this team is going to win. Right. Mm -hmm. There's just you just continue to learn. You just continue to learn and you get to a place where, you know, the length and the width and the depth and the height of it. Yeah. Um, same as in your finances. And, and you think, man, I've been doing, you know, my finances for years and, you know, my whole life and I'm good to go. But then once you start talking to the experts, right, once you start seeing how they react and how they do things, yeah. then you're like, 
well, that's a little bit different than mine. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm 41 years old and I'm still learning today, yeah. you yeah. know, within the last month or two. It's like, I, 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 I could do that that way. That's different than the way I've always done this, mm -hmm. right? And then what happens is once you start doing those right things, then you start to experience the blessings, right? And God just starts to provide. Yeah. That's his riches and glory, right? And things just start coming through because why? Because you're making right decisions. Yeah. You're doing the right things, right? You're in the right place. You're making sure you're with the right people, right? And so then you start to experience his goodness. You start to right. experience his riches and his glory. And I'm going to tell you, all that does for me is that makes me want to know more. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, well, there's got to be more. Right. And if this just came out of nowhere, and I haven't experienced this at all until now, what else am I, what else is out there for me? Right. Yeah. What else is included in his riches? What else is in his glory? Right. Yeah. When I'm rooted and I'm grounded in him. And, and the awesome thing is, is it's like, oh, well, you know, I missed that or I haven't done that. And, you know, now I don't have the opportunity for this. Being rooted and grounded in love in God is so awesome because his word tells us he's the same. Yep. Yesterday, today, today and, and forever. forever. It also tells us that he is no respecter of persons. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord is right because I know that whatever he's done for somebody else, do for he can do for me. Mm -hmm. And that's when you start getting that mindset, you start building up, you start strengthening your inner man, yeah. your confidence rises, right? And then you start getting into hope, earnest, confident expectation of what his word says, and less about, man, that would be awesome. Right. Well, I wish I could you know, experience <laughs> that, right? Yeah. Because it's just kind of like there's no basis, there's no foundation. Mm -hmm. Once you get rooted and grounded in, in love, right, which is God, well, you're firming up your foundation. Mm -hmm. When you build your strong foundation and you start building up, the enemy's going to attack. There's mm -hmm. things going to pop up, but you've got such a solid foundation. Yeah. You have something to stand on and go, no, 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 no. I'm rooted and grounded in him. Mm -hmm. I understand all facets of love. Yeah. I know what his word says. Right? His word says he will rebuke the devourer for my sake. Right? His word says he's come that I may have life and have it in abundance, right? And so it's it's less like you're in a house of cards or you're in a house of straw, mm -hmm. right? And the big bad wolf coming yeah, and blowing it down, things. right? <laughs> and you, you start to make your way into that house of brick, right? Where it's not going to just fall apart mm -hmm. because something happens. Yeah. And it's so neat that God wants to have fellowship with us Right where we're at. Yeah. And I think it was Jenny's book um, to where she was talking about how God wants to come and dwell in our house. And a lot of times we um, we do. We kind of think, oh, gosh, no. I don't know if y'all ever had a guest come over and your house was <coughs> not prepared. You for clean it up. You're like, I need like a really long time, but give me a few minutes to get everything picked up or out of the living room or, you know, hidden in a closet yeah. or something. And we do that with God sometimes when we're like, ooh, no, I don't want to get close to God yet because I don't yeah. want to find out some of the yeah. things that I'm uncomfortable with or yeah. that I know are not right. And God's like, I already know everything about you. I already yeah. know you're doing this or, you know, how things are operating in your household. But he wants to come in. And then when we allow him into our home, when we allow him to stay there and not just say, yeah, you can come over and visit for a little bit. All right, I need you to leave now so I can get back to my life. But when we allow him to actually reside in our home, now he's able to come in and he's able to help clean up. He's not there to like, you know, say, oh gosh, that's dirty. Oh, you need to fix this. You need to fix, fix that. He's there to help pick it up, wash those dishes, vacuum those floors. He's there to help get your finances in order, get your relationship restored. He's there to help every area of your life. 
But sometimes we see him as the one who's standing over us, condemning us. Yeah. And that's not who God is. The enemy is always there to put condemnation on us. God is there to reveal things to us on how we can better situations. He's always the one with the plan, yep. with the way um, to success. The enemy is always there trying to throw obstacles in our way and to show you why you can't do things. Yeah. And there is a difference between condemnation and conviction a huge difference right condemnation is the enemy telling mm -hmm. you you're not you're not good enough yeah putting you down yeah see what you did you don't qualify anymore mm -hmm. conviction is knowing that man i'm doing this and it doesn't just line lining up with this word yeah it just doesn't feel right it doesn't right? set right but, but conviction is internal conviction is not somebody telling us that we're doing something yeah. wrong right and it's not our job to tell people that they're doing something wrong, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. the Lord can use sure. you to talk to someone, but if the Lord didn't tell you to say something, I mean, you learn to keep your mouth yeah. shut sometimes. Absolutely, right? You just let, you show the example, right? And you are the, the light. You are the example that knows the width and the length and the depth and the height of his love. Mm -hmm. And you let God take care of that, right? Yeah. Unless, like you, Pastor Rebecca said, right? If the Lord tells you to say something... But, you know, the Lord's going to tell you to I talk to somebody it. in the correct way. Yeah. Right? It's not, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. The Bible says you shouldn't do that, and that's wrong. No, that's not the way yeah. God's going to tell you to talk to people, right? <clears throat> Unless that's just how they receive it, and he, and he knows that, right? But, but you'll know the difference. You'll know a huge difference. Because I know for me, when the Lord told me to talk to someone, and I'm like, Oh, like it, inside, I'm like yeah, screaming. <clears throat> I'm like, I don't, I don't want to go tell that person that. Well, I know that is not my flesh telling me to go tell that person something because I'm already, my flesh is uncomfortable yeah. because it's like, you want me to say what? Mm -hmm. But in those moments when I was obedient and I stepped out and I actually said what the Lord told me to say, I was like, wow, that went way different than I thought it was going to go because I said it the way he thought told me to say it yep. and we find out in the word what did jesus do yep. he said what his father said that's right same thing we're supposed to do not just add to it take things away from it we're supposed to say exactly what he tells us to say yeah and you look at the different stories where people were healed right they were healed by jesus talking to them right mm -hmm. and putting his hands on yeah but it was because he said i only say what my father says i only do what my father says to do and so there's healing in that, yeah. right? There is miracles in that. There is increase in that. Yeah. There's forgiveness in that, mm -hmm. right? And it, it'll soften somebody's heart. Like the Lord will soften their heart and prepare them to receive what he wants them to hear. Right. If he's telling you to say something to them. <clears throat> okay. Talking about being rooted and grounded in love <clears throat> so that you may be able to comprehend all facets with length depth height for what reason to know the love of christ in verse 19 which passes knowledge which means it's going to to be something that is beyond what we think right yeah. you can picture something in your head you can think you know how a situation just like you said is going to play out and if i say this or if i do this right Look at, I mean, just look at our social media platforms that are out there today. Mm -hmm. right? You so can many. look at something that somebody puts there, right? And you're pretty sure um, this is how this is going to, this is, people are going to react like this. <laughs> They're going to react this way. Yeah. You know what I mean? What this is saying is, is that when you're rooted and grounded in him, the, the, the answers, right? The way through it, it's going to surpass all knowledge. Right? It's going to be where you think this is not possible. Right? Yeah. It can be in him. Mm -hmm. Right? It's got. You could be an expert on anything that you want to be an expert on. Yeah. Right. But being rooted in him and understanding what love is, and comprehending that, it passes all knowledge, so that what. <clears throat> so that you can be filled with all the fullness of God. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times if we start using our heads, using our brains and thinking, I know what I need to do here without talking to him and without being rooted in him and, and grounded in his love, we try to do things on our own Yeah. without him. 
without his assistance. Oh gosh, yeah. Because we think, well, I know, uh, I know what I need to do here. Mm -hmm. Right? I, I know, I know where I messed up. I know where I missed it. I know what needs to happen here to fix this, and I'm going to go get this done. And I'm going to go do it. Right? Yeah. I know what I need to do to earn a paycheck to my family. Right? And I'm just going to go do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, we need to get this, this bill comes in, right? Yeah. And it's like, okay, I'm already doing what I think I should be doing to provide for my family and I'm barely doing that. Now I got to figure this one out too, mm -hmm. right? Being rooted and grounded in him, right? And experiencing his riches, his glory, <clears throat> that's going to pass, surpass all knowledge, which means what? I need to be in him. I need to be in, rooted and grounded in God and yeah. say, Lord, Show me the answer to this, mm -hmm. and he will. Yeah, he really will. Even when you don't expect it, he will. Oh yeah. Well, I like to think of it this way. <clears throat> so when we are rooted and we're grounded in God's word, when we are reading what it says, believing it, and putting it in action. Okay. I always think of. So I don't know if you guys watch the Christmas movies and all that stuff that's out. My wonderful husband will sit down and watch with me without complaining. And so I'm very thankful for that. But what will happen before the show is even up, before we're even halfway through, he'll be like, I already know how it's going to play out. And so he'll like tell me his, what he thinks is going to happen. And majority of the time, he's <laughs> right, okay? Because they're all pretty predictable. However, we have watched some that he's like, I did not see, oh, that, coming see that coming at all. Well, that's how I'm seeing this play out. When yeah. we start applying these principles in yeah. our life, when we are rooted in him, it's like that plot twist. It's like, yeah. what? I did. How did that happen? Yeah. I would have never have seen that coming. Yeah. And it's because we took a different approach to how we normally do. So yeah. instead of us doing it on our own, we're now allowing God to give us our wisdom that we needed. And when we do that, it shifts things, yeah. and so you have different results. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. And you, you know, you think like, how do I know that? You know, how do I receive God's wisdom? The word of God tells us: if anybody of you lacks wisdom, yes. ask for it. Mm -hmm. Ask of Him. It's the word says, "Who gives to all yeah. liberally, yeah, freely, He's and given without it. reproach." Which the word reproach just means with, without a. I already given this to you once, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Without a, what happened the last time, right? Mm -hmm. Which means what? Without any kind of question, without any comment. Yeah. He'll give you that wisdom. Yeah. Especially when you're rooted and grounded in Him, because now you're rooted and grounded in Him. You're strengthened in His love, His glory, His riches. He dwells in your heart, and you know it so much, yeah. right? That it's going to surpass all knowledge. Mm -hmm. and then it also says. That you may be filled with the, all the fullness of God. Being filled, right? Being completely full of what? Of Him. That's right. That's where you're rooted. Mm -hmm. That's where you're grounded. That's where you don't make rash decisions. Yeah. That's where everyone in traffic doesn't just make you want to fly off the handle. Right? Yes. <laughs> because why? You're full of Him. Uh -huh. You're full of God. You're full of love. You're full of agape love, which is unconditional, mm -hmm. right? Which means is, you know what? I'm going to love you, yeah. right? I may not care for you in the flesh very much right now, but I love you in the spirit, <laughs> right? And so those are the things. And then, of course, in verse 20, it's telling you this is what you do. This is how you do it. Yeah. And this is now why you do it. Now to him who is able to do what? <laughs> exceedingly abundantly above all now, I'm gonna stop because there is nothing lacking here that's right there is no shortage no here this this is what exceedingly mm -hmm. which means more yeah right abundantly mm -hmm. which means more above more all yep meaning He's above all. Yeah. It's more than any. It's more than anything from anyone. It's more than any situation. But it says to him yeah. who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And mm -hmm. I'm going to stop there because asking 
that you you got to say it, right? Just yeah. like we said, if you if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask. ask. If you want to be rooted and grounded in love, ask God, how do I be rooted? How do I get grounded yeah. in you, right? How do I understand the length, the depth, the width, the depth, the height? How does how do I get to a place where that love is in my life and it surpasses all knowledge? Mm-hmm. Right? Ask for it. Yeah. And then it says he's going to do even more than that. More than you can ask or even more than you think, right? Yeah. Because when things that you think, they generally are what come out of your mouth and you end up saying them or asking them. Because again, we've talked about this in the past, where the thoughts that roll around in your head, if you let them stay in there long enough, they get down into your heart, right? Yeah. Out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth will speak. Yeah. Even when we talk about asking Jesus into your heart, how do you do that? You confess with your mouth, yeah. right? You believe yeah. with your heart. So these are all, it's all connected and it's all Absolutely. tied together. Yeah. He's able to do exceedingly more than we abundantly above anything that we could ask or think according to what? The New King James Version says the power that works in us. I think the Amplified says according to his power that works in us. You might check me on that just so that I make sure I'm saying it right. But in any case, right, the power is his power and it's at work in us. Because why? Because we've asked him into our heart. Because we've let him come in. We've asked him to come in, right? So that what? So that we could comprehend. Yeah, see? So the, the Amplified Version actually says, Now to him who, by in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us, is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly, mm-hmm. not just exceedingly, not just ab- abundantly, super abundantly, Far over and above all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's covering everything, right? It is. There's nothing missing. There's nothing broken. There's no lack, right? He knows it all. He's a part of it. Amen. Then verse 21, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to what? To all generations, right? All generations are what? They're all the people. Yeah. All generations are back up here in verse um, 14 and 15, right? Where he talks about the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That's the generations. So he's able to do this, not just for you, not just for me. But he's saying, I'm here. Yeah. I am ready to provide, right? There's enough of me to go around. Amen. And Paul's saying there's enough of him that he's going to give this out, that he's going to provide, that his love will go to all. What does it say? All generations forever and ever. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. So that's a lot of information. <laughs> yeah. But it's all good information. It is. Right? Great. It's being rooted and being grounded. And it's not always the easiest thing, right? Because your flesh is so loud. Mm-hmm. Your, fr- your flesh screams so loud, right? And what is it wanting to do? Exactly. It's wanting to do the things that are of this world. You see the bumper stickers or the, the window stickers that, you know, say not of this world, right? Yes. Because we may be in this world, but we're not of it, right? Yes. And your flesh is going to want to do the things that are of this world. Yeah. Right? Absolutely well, they want to. I mean, that's just the way the enemy works. The enemy comes in, and he makes things attractive, and your flesh doesn't want, right? Your flesh wants to be in control. Think about fasting, right? When you, when you, oh, think about this is great. Okay. <laughs> because I was in a place where um, sugar was like a big thing for me. Like, I, I drank a lot of sodas, right? I did a lot of different things. And when I made the conscious decision to say, I need to cut back on these things because that's not good for my body. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> and so the first day, I'm like, I'm not going to drink any, you know, soda drinks today, right? I'm going to drink with water. And my flesh was screaming <laughs> so loud. You know how it was screaming? It was screaming in the form of this pounding headache, right? Because it's going, hey, this is different. We don't like this. Mm -hmm. We want you to do what we want. My flesh was like, I want you to drink that carbonated sugar drink, right? I still do. 
don't you know don't think about that but it's all in moderation you know what i mean like i'm like hey he's way better i, did, um, way better. I used to i used to drink a lot of you know uh, of soda i used to drink a lot of uh energy drinks you know what i mean Teas. sweet tea especially from like chicken Man, express Texas, and so. so it's like that was just part of it and when i first took that away from my flesh it started screaming mm -hmm. okay but what then i have to do is just i had to put that flesh into check and i had to stay rooted and grounded and say no no, no. what god says yeah that i don't have to deal with this mm -hmm. he's telling me right now that his love for me is so much better than anything that my yeah. flesh wants yeah i was looking up matthew 26 41 it said, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And it is. So even Jesus is telling us that your spirit wants to do right. It wants to do, you know, the things that his word talks about. Your flesh is weak. It wants you to eat yeah. the bad things. It wants yeah. you to not exercise. It wants you to, you know, make all the bad decisions. But if Jesus He's giving us that forewarning of, hey, know that your spirit and your flesh are not on the same team. They are at battle, yeah. right? So when we know that, when we have temptation that presents itself, we are going to say, okay, is my flesh stronger or is my spirit stronger? Because mm. whatever we feed the most is what will win. Right. Who was it that, that gave that example of the dogs? I don't remember. I don't know. I'm going to have to look it up and see if I can find it. But they used an example of these two dogs. And um, they asked the person, which dog will win this fight? And so they were trying to, you know, analyze and figure out which one they thought. And they gave their answer. And he was like, the dog that will win the fight is the one you feed the most. Because if they starve the other one, it's weak. It's it can't weaker, do yeah. anything. Yeah. So it didn't matter what type of dogs they were. It mattered on which dog was healthier, which dog was able to, you know, do what needed to be done. Well, it's the same thing with us. Are we feeding our flesh more or are we feeding our spirit more? Because yeah. that's how when Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy, which tells us he's going to do that in John 10.10, 10, mm -hmm. when he comes to do those things, we find out real quick what's stronger is our faith stronger is our spirit stronger or is our flesh stronger because um majority of the time what comes out of our mouth will tell you right then and there yeah. which one's stronger yeah. because did you say something bad or against god's word that's your flesh mm -hmm. or did you say something that lines up with god's word and is going to help your future yeah. right yeah. so again there's no condemnation because we've all been there and said oh, the sure. wrong things and made the wrong choices. But it's being quick to repent and say, Lord, forgive me. I did not mean to say that. Mm -hmm. I, I rebuke that. I'm not yeah. that way. That is not the way that I'm going to, you know, continue on. But Satan will try and, you know, shift you into that too. Of Well, see, you've already said it. Well, you've already done mm -hmm. it. You've already lost it. No, no matter where you're at in that season of life mm -hmm. you can get out you can go back to the word of god and get yeah. rooted and grounded to where you build your spirit man where your spirit is strong yeah. you have that god faith because you're rooted in love and you're able to say nope i'm making that shift sure. we're gonna have that plot twist that no one saw, no coming, one saw coming because i chose god Amen. like that that, that you you started wrapping this up with that is, is it doesn't matter where you are, right? When I think about that is, um, even in my life, um, you know, I was close to God. I, I was in church, right? I was seeking after him. I mm -hmm. was doing the right things. And then I went down the, plat the, the path of the flesh, right? And I let my flesh decide and take over. And I made decisions based upon the things that I wanted, you know, yeah. for me. Um, it didn't have anything to do with anybody else. Right, that had no consideration of how it impacted anyone else, right? And then I came back to God, and I mean, it's like, it's like those those years, they're they're gone, right? Because they're just they're not a part of who I am, right? 
I, I went through that yeah. and I experienced it, but I'm choosing to not hang on to that. And he took me right back in, right? Oh, and he absolutely. has blessed me even more, right, than he had ever had before. And it's like, you would think, like, man, I gave you, I was giving yeah. you what you needed, everything you wanted, and then you turned your back on me, and now you're coming back, right? In the flesh, the flesh is going to be like, I don't think I can trust you, mm-hmm. right? But that's not who God is. Yeah. Just like you said, it doesn't matter where you are. You can come back to him, and he's going to take you in. And I think of the prodigal son, yeah, right? Just that example of, I mean, he, he went to his dad, and he was like, just give me everything that's mine now. What did he do? He gave it to him. Right? But then whenever he messed it all up, see, that's when the enemy came in and told him, you messed it up. You've lost it, right? You're not getting it back. It's gone, right? And so what did he do? He thought, I'm not even worthy to go be a servant for my yeah. father. And he just went and wallowed in the worst possible filth he could be in. And then one day he was just like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. I've got to go back. I've got to go to my father and ask him, can I at least be a servant in this field? Yeah. Because that's better than where I'm at now. Right? And even in the story I love so much is just his dad saw him coming from so far away. Yeah. Think about all the years that he was gone. Think about the transformation of his body. Think about, you know, being in the field with the pigs. Right? I'm sure he wasn't very clean. I'm sure he wasn't shaven. I'm sure his hair was longer. He definitely wasn't wearing the really nice clothes, right, that he was wearing when he left. You know, he didn't have everything that he had. But his dad saw him coming and he was like, that's my son. That's how God is for us. No matter where you're at, that's my child. And he sees us from far off. That's what I think about is it doesn't matter where you're at. He's always seen you. He always Absolutely. knows what you look like. He knows your voice. And so when you call on him, right, he's there to take you back in. That's right. That's truly being rooted and being grounded, right, is it doesn't matter. Come here, I'm going to show you love. Right. That's what we're called to do. We're called to show people love. It's not the easiest thing to do because sometimes people, they want to press every button you got. Every button. <laughs> Twice, right? Yeah. And <clears throat> some people are doing it just to see if they can make you snap. You know what I mean? And we're called to show love because we're made in his image. If we're made in his image and in, in his likeness, if he had, the word of God says, is he had a part in the creation of our innermost being, of our innermost parts, if we're made in his image, and if he had a hand in it, then we're designed to operate in love. We're designed to live by faith. Yeah. And so when we're walking in what we were created for and designed for, it's so much more fun. Mm -hmm. And and it, it excites you. It gives you that extra drive that you need. And, and to overcome your flesh, who's going, just go lay down, yeah. right? just go take a break. You've done enough. somebody else's turn. I mean, mm-hmm. and so anyways, I, I hope that, that that spoke to you um, today. We really, really appreciate you. We love every single thank one you. of you. We thank you for your support. We thank you for watching online. Um, we just want to say that we pray over your seeds, that we love you guys, that we appreciate you. We want to say thank you so much for watching, and we will see you guys next week. We would like to invite you to follow Morning Coffee with Jesus podcast for your cup of encouragement. We also want to thank our friends and partners for helping us spread God's word around the world. If you would like to give or become a partner with the ministry, you can scan the QR code or visit morningcoffeewithjesus.com and click donate. When you give, we are able to tell more people about Jesus, help in our community, and give back into other ministries. If you have a prayer request or would like to stay connected, you can visit morningcoffeewithjesus.com slash stay connected.